Hi, this is Khalil Gulliwala, host of the BIPOC Manager Podcast, a weekly podcast helping minorities uh, thrive in their careers and overcome prejudice. Today, we have the amazing Esan Dariati with us. Esan is a Senior Advisor, Innovation and Strategic Impact at the John Wilson School of Business, where he's also the Director of the National Bank Initiative in Entrepreneurship and Family Business. Uh, what is super interesting about Esan is he is a matchmaker. He's kicked off the John Molson Perspective Knowledge Hub, essentially find that bridge between academic research and the needs of the business community. And if you ever work at public institutions, you know how difficult that is. Um, and lastly, before I give it to Esan, uh, the, the, the reason why I invited here was not only is a brilliant matchmaker, but he's also someone who just has so much fun being him. I want to invite him and to share some of that energy. Uh, Esan, please. Thank you, Khalil. Uh, thank you for having me on your amazing podcast. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, thank you for the great introduction. Thank you so much, Esan. And you know, one of the things I love about your story is sort of it's, it's sort of it's, it's your own history of movement. So, can you talk a bit more of your background and the different places you've been? Yeah, I'm a person who I like to explore different things. So my academic background, I started the engineering program and then did my MBA. And then at the point I decided I don't want to just do any other, any, anything with any other thing with universities. I started doing my PhD, came to Canada. It was 2009. I started doing my PhD. Then uh, instead of going to a typical path of, uh, okay, being a researcher and doing like tenure track and research track, I decided to kind of build my own path and was involved in like startups, entrepreneurship, consulting, teaching. Um, and I love starting change. And I love initiating change. I might not be the best one for finishing it. I'm more of a generator in the innovation uh, 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 words, innovation language, if I would say, but that's how it started. And then I'm here now, mostly at Concordia these days, uh, trying to be an agent of change and creating positive impact, mostly to power of others. So I am a matchmaker in a sense, and I want to bring people together, different different type of capabilities from different camps, and that's where the big change happened. Thank you, Hassan. Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it, is you focusing on other people. Now imagine as well, like you know, when you came to Canada, I imagine this was a network that you that that you're building from scratch. You talk about academia and what you've done. Can you share some of sort of your own experiences of sort of how kind of starting from sort of you know from a baseline and building it up to where it is today? Actually, my immigration to Canada wasn't my first big immigration. I think the biggest I had one immigration internally. I'm Iranian, was because some of us we call it Persian. <laughs> so it's like looks nicer. So the uh, so I I was raised and I was born and raised in a small town uh, in southeast of Iran, and then to the National Intense Exam for universities, I went to like the capital, which was Tehran. So a guy who was like coming from a smaller town, although like most of my relatives were living in a big in, a, in Tehran, but going there was a big change for us. Like I was a guy coming from a town less than twenty thousand people to like a big city of like 10, 15 million people. And uh, so a bit of accent, and I'm usually like a person who's talking too fast all the time. So it's still like, in a rush. And so getting like embedded to this new culture was a, this, uh, was, was the first challenge of integration for me in, in part of the immigration process. And then when I came to Canada, it was a time which I actually had my own business back home in Iran. I had a consulting business working with multinationals. And I had my big, my big network. And then they came here, I started again from zero. But I tried to implement the lesson which I learned from the first kind of semi-immigration which I had in this new context. And I think that was something which I benefited from. Okay. And then, uh, are you able to share maybe sort of like a few of the tactics or sort of a, a few things you've done that, sort of, that you find has really helped you build your network? Yeah, I think it's like, first of all, I really believe of the power of ourselves as unique entities. Okay, so me, Esan Dayati, I'm unique and I'm unique because of my background. Actually, I'm unique, uh, I'm unique because of what other might, other people might see as liabilities or other like immigrants might see as liabilities. I'm coming here, I have an accent, I don't, I don't know English and French the same as the, a native person knows. I don't have the Good, uh, good network. When I'm coming with my own story, 
And that story of myself is something which is very unique. And I think we should embrace it. And I try to use it as much as possible to embrace my unique self. And that helped me a lot in the process. So if I want to talk about like three main elements, as, as consultants do always talk about, three gold, golden rule of three, the first one would be authenticity. Okay, so I try to be as authentic as possible. I never wanted to be someone else or pretend to be someone else. It doesn't mean I was go it doesn't mean I was very comfortable with, with who I was. I knew so it was very self I tried to be like have side self-reflection and understanding, okay, so what I am, what are the gaps, what should I learn? And so but while I was appreciating myself as the way I, I was. So the first one was being authentic, the second one was being open to new experience. I wanted to learn, I was eager to see new things and to experience new ways of living and experience talking to the new people. And that was one of the main aspects of me like building my network. I'm really proud of the network which I have now, but it's mostly because I really like to know new things. I really like to experience new and new new people and new connections. And that's okay, I always make I was a, I always uh, make fun of like a, a very good friend of mine who we met, you know, like kind of best friends these days. Uh, business-wise and uh, uh, friendship-wise, we have worked together, but we met in an elevator. So I, said, I met my best friend in an elevator. So like in 20 seconds, elevator ride, we met, and then I said, have a coffee, you have you have an interesting background. So then we became best friends. So that's how things happen, like being authentic. And I was actually, at that time, I was making fun of my own accent, talking to him. So that's being authentic, being open. And being confident too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have this real sense of that what you've done is that you've sort of had these experiences, but you've always kind of narr you've always created your own narrative, rather than someone putting you in a box. You've taken it and kind of said, "This is who I am," and these are parts of me, and you've embraced them. Yeah, and the thing is, like, so like, and and it comes with this self reflection. So the it comes with the the point of self reflection. So you should be aware of your weaknesses. You should be comfortable being vulnerable. Uh, people have been like making fun of my accent. I'm a person who is like talking fast, and people you know, are mumbling somehow. And I know, I know, I'm doing it sometimes, especially under like excitement, and if it's like a situation, the time is like tight. But I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. And the question is like, how can you be comfortable with your vulnerability and try to solve it somehow, and try to use it as a as a strength, not as a weakness. So that's the important thing. Being self-aware, uh, I know we, I had to in my class, in my strategy class, and I've been making fun of myself yeah. in the class all the time. And I love that. I love that. I make it, you cannot be humorous if you cannot fun of, you can make fun of yourself. Yeah. And this is what I like, as I mentioned, Hassan, is having you is that you seem so comfortable and fun and happy. Like, you know, there's there's a sense where I think as minorities, we end up sort of like playing these roles of performing. And seeing you, I was like, wow, like he, I sh like I want to be more like that. Like I want to be someone who actually is like, you know, living by their own rules. And um, and I'm sure you probably like broken rules to kind of, you know, get this far. Can you, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I think it's like the broken, breaking rules is what I like. I like building new things. I like building my own path. And getting to that point, I will get to that point again uh, a bit later, but I think one of the biggest problems, the biggest mistakes that new immigrants, people from different backgrounds is doing, they're trying to be someone else. They're trying to imitate someone who they are not. Okay, I'm a Persian guy, I'm a Persian person coming to Canada. I have this uh, the history of being here like for 10, for 10 to 14 years. I, have, I never played baseball in my life. So I never watched baseball in my life, but I am, but but, but I, I I I don't want to pretend I'm someone else. And mm. my name is my name is not Mike Taylor. Yeah, I don't want to be Mike Taylor. I shouldn't be Mike Taylor. I'm a son of Ayati, and that gives me a different story. So that's one thing. And okay, in many in many ways, on the like a business side, on uh, <laughs> breaking the rules. One of my, uh, you know, I even when I'm cooking. I'm trying to get like my own personal experience uh, mixed with anything. I put saffron in everything. 
So everything in my house is come with saffron. Like the most, the most like Western food <laughs> comes with saffron. And people say, oh, that's, that's really interesting. Sometimes it's not easy to be, <laughs> to be eaten, but that's like, so, so then it's not easy to eat, but that's what happens. So like bring your own spice to the recipe. Yeah. And I'm trying to bring my own spice to the recipe. I love that. It's like spice, the zest, you know, like I think talking to you, like you're just, you're having fun. Like this is like, you're not shying away from who you are. You're taking these parts of yourself and you're like, how do I lead with and integrate it into you? Yeah. And the thing is, like, as, I, as I said, being self-aware, yeah. being comfortable with you, with who you are, but trying to be out of your comfort zone Yeah. at the same time. So how can I be a, I can I learn? How can I learn from different people? And one of the reasons which I, you might say I'm successful in building my network because I'm comfortable. I'm I love learning from other people, yeah. especially in the field which I don't know anything. So I talk to people to learn to get the experience. In many cases, it gives me out of my comfort zone. I might feel oh I don't know anything about this, but so that's something that uh, was I, I developed. It was like okay the art of listening. How should I listen more? And that's a big part of. Being an ex- outsider, which we always want to prove ourselves. Sometimes proving ourselves is happening by sitting back and listening and giving our spice at the right time. Yeah. You cannot put saffron from like A to Z of the cooking. It's a good time. It's the right time for the saffron to put it there. Yeah. No, I guess and you the- cannot put too much saffron in the food as well. Yeah. No, your use of saffron is it's very Iranian. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh you know, I, I get that. Um, you know, um Esan, you know, before we before we kind of wrap up, is there anything that that that, that you'd want to share, anything that, that you'd want to talk about? Uh one thing is like so I'm gonna just reiterate those three elements which I came up with. It's like be, be authentic, be confident, be open. And make fun of like the of the negative things happens around you. Or like and it happens a lot, probably like as an immigrant, it's happened a lot for you as well. People mispronounce your name all the time. All the time. Okay, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about a Starbucks. That, okay, I think that's a marketing strategy that they have because they that's the way that you get engagement and his and, and kind of experience. But like my closest colleagues, uh, my boss was used to, he was calling me Eshan for like many years. It's that, and then you, you make fun of it. So I was making fun of it. I guess I know. And now she's good. She's calling me a son. Uh, there was nothing bad around it, but okay, it's not easy for people to say a son the way that we say it. So can okay, make fun of it. Like, the word is like, don't take life in some aspects too serious. And then people will be open for you to go to their network, to their mm-hmm. new thing. And I believe like each of us, we have our own main element of uniqueness. You should find it. We should find it and we should focus on that. We talk about complete advantages. We talk about the point of uniqueness. Those point of uniqueness actually most of the time come from our uh, points of vulnerabilities or they're coming from the points of failures. The many failures that we had, many challenges that we had as immigrants give us a significant tool to overcome future challenges that many people haven't had that. Yeah. You know, what, what, you're, what you're saying reminds me of like one of my favorite Woody Allen quotes, which is 80% success is just showing up. Like if you <laughs> show up, if you just show up and you're okay being uncomfortable, I think then you can have it. And it sounds like you're just, you're training yourself in, in almost like a, like a mindset to learn. Mindset, you say, I'm uncomfortable because you're learning. Mindset is just to keep it open and just showing up and building connections with people. Yeah, talking about Woody Allen. So the, one of my favorite quotes about Woody Allen is like when at the beginning of Annie Hall, it's talking about the story of two old ladies in a resort, talking about the food. And at the end, he says like, I don't want to be a member of a club that accepts, accepts me as a member. So <laughs> I hope that's not the, the quote that you are following. But yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, th- 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 thank you so much, Esam, for appearing. Thank you so much for your advice. Mm-hmm. Um, and if and, 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 and if people want to follow you, if people want to connect with you, what's the best way they could do that? Our LinkedIn. 
I love connecting with people on LinkedIn. And I think it's like, we are very lucky these days because we can build our network in uh, the social media platform, which are like, I'm not I'm not in all of them. We cannot manage all of them. But if we are good in managing our social media network, our like online presence, it could be very helpful. We're building our network. We're building our uh, our uh, community. Uh, but it, it counts its own like disadvantages. So like time management is very important. But I'm trying to use my LinkedIn as effective as possible. So I chose that medium as my main medium. LinkedIn is my more main professional medium. I don't have Twitter. You call it X. Now. So I don't have time for that. But like so me, LinkedIn is my medium. So play with it. Uh, so I'm I'm doing LinkedIn. So if anyone wants to uh, connect with me, I would be happy okay. to connect. That's my passion. Thank you so much, Essan. Thank you very much for having me in the show.